everyone and welcome to Storytime with Jocelyn. This week we're going to read from Jocelyn's Dr. Seuss collection. We're going to be reading Horton Hears a Who. It is one of Jocelyn's absolute favorite because it's about big and small things like her. And so this one's originally a, was published in 1954 by Dr. Seuss. So let us begin because we're going to have some fun today with this story. So on the 15th of May, which is this Monday, that's why we're reading it today, in the jungle of Nul, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool, he was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys, when Horton the elephant heard a small noise. So Horton stopped splashing. He looked toward the sound, Jocelyn. That's funny, thought Horton. There's no one around. Then he heard it again, just a very faint yelp, as if some tiny person were calling for help. Mm-hmm, I'll help you, said Horton, but who are you? Where? He looked and looked. He could see nothing there, but a small speck of dust blowing past through the air. Can you see the peck of dust? That is tiny. I say, murmured Horton, I've never heard tell of a small speck of dust that is able to yell. So you know what I think? Why, I think that there must be someone on top of that small speck of dust. Some sort of creature of very small size, Jocelyn, too small to be seen by an elephant's eyes. Some poor little person who's shaking with fear that he'll blow in the pool. He has no way to steer. I'll just have to save him because after all, a person's a person, no matter how small. Right, Jocelyn? That's right. So gently and using the greatest of care, the elephant stretched his great trunk through the air and he lifted the dust speck and carried it over and placed it down safe on a very soft clover. Huff, huffed a voice. Twas a sour kangaroo. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, huffed too. Why, that speck is as small as the head of a pin. A person on that, why, there never has been. Believe me, said Horton, I tell you sincerely, my ears are quite keen and I heard him quite clearly. I know there's a person down there and what's more, Quite likely, there's two, even three, even four. Quite likely. A family, for all that we know. A family with children just starting to grow. So please, Horton said as a favor to me, try not to disturb them. Just please let them be. You're a fool, laughed the sour kangaroo. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too. You're the biggest blame fool in the jungle of Nul. And the kangaroos plunged in the cool of the pool. What terrible splashing, the elephant frowned. I can't let my very small persons get drowned. I've got to protect them. I'm bigger than they. So he plucked up the clover and hustled them away. Through the high jungle treetops, the news quickly spread. He talks to a dust speck. He's out of his head. Just look at him walk with the speck on that flower. And Horton walked worrying almost an hour. Should I put the speck down? Horton thought was with alarm. If I do, these small persons may come to great harm. I can't put them down and I won't after all. A person's a person. 
no matter how small. Right, Jocelyn? <laughs> Then Horton stopped walking. The speck voice was talking. The voice was so faint, he could just barely hear it. Speak up, please, said Horton. He put his ear near it. My friend, came the voice. You're a very fine friend. You've helped all us folks on this dust speck no end. You've saved all our houses, our ceilings and floors. You've saved all our churches and our grocery stores. You mean, Horton gasped, you have buildings there too? Oh yes, piped the voice. We most certainly do. I know, called the voice. I'm too small to be seen. But my mayor of a town that is friendly and clean. Our buildings too, you would seem terribly small. But to us who aren't big, they are wonderfully tall. My town is called Whoville. For I am a who, and we who's are all thankful and grateful to you. And Horton called back to the mayor of the town. You're safe now, don't worry. I won't let you down. But just as he spoke to the mayor of the speck, three big jungle monkeys climbed up on Horton's back and his neck. The Wisterkin brothers came shouting, what rot? This elephant's talking to who's who are not. There aren't any who's and they don't have a mayor and we're going to stop all this nonsense so there. They snatched Horton's clover. They carried it off to a black bottomed eagle named Vlad Vladeroff, a mighty strong eagle, a very swift wing. And they said, will you kindly get rid of this thing? And before the poor elephant even could speak, that eagle flew off with the flower in his beak. All that late afternoon and fell into far into the night, that black bottom bird flapped his wings in fast flight, while Horton chased after with groans over stones that tattered his toenails and battered his bones and begged, please don't harm all my little folks who have so much right to live as us bigger folks do. But far, far beyond him, that eagle kept flapping and over his shoulder called back, quite I'll fly the night through. I'm a bird. I don't mind it. And I'll hide this tomorrow where you'll never find it. Jocelyn, you enjoying the story? Yeah. <laughs> At 6.56 the next morning, he did it. It sure was a terrible place that he hid it. He let that small clover drop somewhere inside of a great patch of clovers, a hundred miles wide. Find that, sneer the bird, but I think you will fail. And he left with a flap of his black bottom tail. I'll find it, cried Horton. I'll find it or bust. I shall find my friends on my small peck of dust. And clover by clover, by clover with care, he picked up and searched them and called, are you there? But clover by clover by clover he found that the one that he sought for was just not around. And by noon, poor old Horton, more dead than alive, had pickled and searched and piled up 9,005. That is a lot. I hope he finds his little who's. Then on through the afternoon, hour after hour till he find them at last on the three millionth flower. My friends, cried the elephant, tell me, do tell. Are you safe? Are you sound? Are you whole? Are you well? He finally found them.
From down on the speck came the voice of the mayor. We've really had trouble, much more than our share. When that black bottom birdie let go and we dropped, we landed so hard that our clocks have not stopped. Our tea box are broken, our rocking chair smashed, and our bicycle tires all blew up when we crashed. So Horton, please, pleaded that voice of the mayor's, will you stick by us who's while we're making repairs? Of course, Horton answered. Of course I will stick. I'll stick by you small folks through thick and through thick. Everything is broken. Huff! Huffed a voice. For almost two days, you've run wild and insisted on chatting with persons you've, who've never existed. Such carrying-ons in our peaceful jungle. We've had quite enough of your following bungle. And I'm here to state snaps the big kangaroo, that your silly nonsensical game is all through. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me too. With the help of the Worcester brothers and dozens of Worcester Kassam uncles and Worcester Kassam cousins and the Wickerson Sam in-laws, whose help I've engaged, you're going to be roped and you're going to be caged. And as for your dust speck, ha, that we all shall boil in a hot steaming kettle of bezel nut oil. Boil it, gasped Horton. Oh, that you can't do. It's all full of persons. I'll prove it to you. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Horton called. Mr. Mayor, you've got to prove now that you really are there. So call a big meeting. Get everyone out. Make every who holler. Make every who shout. Make every who scream. If you don't, every who is going to end up in Bezel Nut Stew. <laughs> and down on the dust speck, the scared little mayor quick called a big meeting in Whoville Town Square. And his people cried loudly. They cried out in fear. We are here. We are here, we are here, we are here. The elephant smiled, that was clear as a bell. You kangaroo surely heard that very well. All I heard, snapped the big kangaroo, was the breeze and the faint sound of wind through the far distant trees. I heard no small voices, and you didn't either. And the young kangaroo in her pout said, me either. Grab him, they shouted, and cage the big dope. Lasso his stomach with 10 miles of rope. Tie the knots tight so he'll never shake loose. Then dunk that dumb speck in the bezel nut juice. Horton fought back with great vigor and vim. But the wicker smam gang was too money for him. They beat him. They mauled him. They started to haul him into his cage. But he managed to call to the mayor. Don't give up. I believe in you all. A person's a person, no matter how small. And you very small persons will not have to die if you make yourselves heard. So come on now and try. The mayor grabbed a tom-tom. He started to smack it. And all over Whoville, they whooped with a racket. They rackled tin kettles. They beat on brass pans, on garbage pail tops and old Canberry cans. They blew on bazookas and blasted great toots, on clarinets, oompas, and boompas, and flutes.
Great gusts of loud racket rang high through the air. They rattled and shook the whole sky. And the mayor called up through the howling mad hullabaloo. Hey, Horton, how's this? Is our sound coming through? And Horton called back, I can hear you just fine, but the kangaroo's ears aren't just strong and quite as mine. They don't hear a thing. Are you sure all your boys are doing their best? Are they all making noise? Are you sure every who down in Whoville is working? Quick, look through your town. Is there anyone shirking? Through the town rushed the mayor from the east to the west, but everyone seemed to be doing his best. Everyone seemed to be yapping and yipping and everyone seemed to be beeping and bipping, but it wasn't enough. All this ruckus and roar, he had to find someone to help him make more. He raced through each building. He searched floor to floor. And just as he felt he was getting nowhere, and almost about to give up in despair, he suddenly burst through a door and that mayor discovered one shrinker, quite hidden away in the Fairfax Apartments, apartment 12J. A very small, very small shrinker named Jojo was standing, just standing and bouncing a yo-yo, not making a sound, not a yip, not a chirp. And the mayor rushed inside and he grabbed the young twerp. And he climbed with the lap up the Eiffelberg Tower. This, cried the mayor, is your town's darkest hour. The time for all our who's who have blood that is red to come to the aid of their country, he said. We've got to make noises in greater amounts. So open your mouth, lad, for every voice counts. Thus he spoke as he climbed when he got to the top the lad cleared his throat and he shouted, Yah! And the yop, that one small extra yop put it over. Finally at last from that speck on that clover, their voices were heard. They rang out clear and clean and the elephant smiled. Do you see what I mean? They've proved they are persons no matter how small and their whole world was saved by the smallest of all. How true, yes, how true, said the big kangaroo. And from now on, you know what I'm planning to do. From now on, I'm going to protect them with you. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too! From the sun in the summer, from rain when it's fallish, I'm going to protect them no matter how smallish. Just as us mothers protect our little ones and I protect my little, little one. That is the end of Horton Hears the Who. I really hope y'all enjoyed that. Jocelyn loves that. Now we're gonna take the time to actually go watch on DVD, Horton Hears the Who. So Jocelyn is going to have a good time. We love that movie and we love this story. We hope you enjoyed it too. And we will see you next week for another story time with Jocelyn. And again, happy Mother's Day to all you mothers on Sunday. And every single day because you should be honored all the time. God bless. Bye-bye.